Good evening and welcome again to our virtual public meeting for the Coastal Georgia Regional Transit Development Plan. My name is Will Butler. I'm the project manager. Uh, we will get started here with our presentation today. This is a recorded presentation. Uh, we will be posting that recording on the project website uh, here in the next day or two, so we can send links out to that so other people can catch up if they weren't able to join us tonight. Uh, here's our meeting agenda. Uh, in this meeting, we'll provide a quick update on the project status and we'll review the TDP process along with the region's public transit landscape. We'll also discuss highlights from our previous stakeholder and public input activities and explain how these have informed the plan's vision and goals. After that, uh, we'll discuss the draft transit alternatives that we're analyzing and solicit your feedback using Mentimeter, which is a web-based application that lets us record your ideas and your input. To use Mentimeter, you'll visit www.menti.com. Uh, we'll show you all of this on the screen before we get started on the activity. Uh, and if you're watching the recorded version, don't worry, you'll have an opportunity to provide your input uh, via public survey following the presentation. So first, we'll provide you with some background information about the plan, the project schedule, and give you an overview of the current transit services that are provided in coastal Georgia. So the primary purpose of a regional transit development plan is to identify transit needs within an area and recommend changes and improvements that inform future investments. Because this is a regional transit development plan, a lot of the focus here is on projects and ideas that will help connect the cities and counties that make up coastal Georgia. TDPs are long range plans with 20 year horizons that help communities develop a vision for transit and then provide a list of investments that can assist in achieving these mobility goals. Here's our current schedule with the green arrow showing the progress that's been made to date. Uh, the project team has completed an existing conditions analysis and we're preparing to finalize the needs assessment and options analysis portion of this plan. Uh, this part uses information that we gathered in the existing conditions report, the feedback we garnered from previous stakeholder activities and things we'll get from tonight's meeting as well to find where transit improvements are needed the most. Uh, we'll provide a list of possible solutions uh, and then we will evaluate those using a framework. Um, again, we're trying to make sure we solicit input tonight as well that we can incorporate into this analysis. Uh, following all that, we will compile a final plan and we will submit that for public review and to the Coastal Regional Commission for consideration. Uh, before we get started in earnest, we would like to talk a little bit about the various transit modes that are relevant in the region so that everyone is on the same page. We know sometimes there can be a bit of jargon when we're talking about these services, so we want to make sure that we put in plain terms what we're talking about before we present to you a lot of ideas. So when we're talking about the future of transit in the region, we're generally looking at four modes that you see here. Uh, the first, the, these fixed route modes that they follow a set route each day and they stop at defined bus stops. Um, city bus fixed route transit is what people think of most when they think of transit. That's like Chatham area transit and Liberty transit in the reason, region. Um, these city bus services function best in more urbanized areas uh, where density can allow them to have some, some economies of scale. Commuter bus is a similar service, but it typically operates across larger distances with fewer stops. Uh, these traditionally operate in one direction according to time of day, so think like in town during the morning and then back out to the suburbs after work hours. Uh, however, uh, employment patterns we know are changing, especially in coastal Georgia region. Uh, so we may be looking at employment shuttles that are actually run in different directions to meet that employment need. Uh, the other category is demand response services, which don't follow fixed routes, but instead provide service to customers upon request. These services can work in either urban or rural areas. Um, the most common form you see is demand response service, uh, it's dial a ride, where riders schedule a ride a day in advance by calling a local dispatcher. Uh, Coastal Regional Commission's Coastal Regional Coaches Service provides this service right now to every county within coastal Georgia. Um, dial a ride is a really flexible form of transit. It can really re meet a lot of needs, but it can sometimes be costly due to long distances or, or the lower rider counts that you sometimes see with these services. Um, Microtransit, which is the last service you'll see here, 
is an emerging form of on-demand service that uses a real-time dynamic routing uh, to provide on-demand service. So customers request a ride on a cell phone app and a bus is then dispatched to meet them. Uh, it's very similar to Uber or Lyft or similar rideshare apps like that. Um, riders are provided with an estimated time of arrival and sometimes instructions on where they need to go to meet the bus. Microtransit can be a really effective solution in smaller towns or suburbanized areas where ridership might not warrant an entire fixed route system. Um, but there's some, some caveats. Microtransit zones, if they get too large, they can become really expensive or wait times can become too long. So there, there's a balancing act between which of these modes uh, can best serve an area. Another type of transit we don't have on here, but that's worth mentioning, is deviated fixed route, which combines aspects of both city bus service and uh, demand response service. So for deviated fixed route, the vehicle follows a set path and schedule, but with advance notice will actually deviate from that route, pick up passengers from a location within a set distance, and then return to the route. That's usually like a quarter mile. It's not too far. It lets the bus stay on schedule. Um, this can provide a lot of flexibility. Uh, it can really benefit older riders or the disabled who have trouble making it to a traditional bus stop, but still maintain a lot of the efficiencies of a regular fixed route bus. Um, Statesboro Area Transit in Statesboro currently provides that service here in the region. Um, like we discussed on the previous slide, four transit services in the region currently operating. Uh, coastal regional coaches providing over the largest service area, basically the entire region, as you see here. Um, all 10 counties, Statesboro Area Transit, uh, they run Coastal Georgia's newest transit system. Um, they run two routes five days a week. Uh, they are approaching their one year anniversary, if I remember correctly. I believe it's in July. So um, it's been very successful. Uh, I want to congratulate them on a, on a successful year. That's really great. Um, then we have Liberty Transit in Liberty, Hinesville, Fort Stewart area. Um, they run three routes and, and operate uh, ADA paratransit. And then Chatham Area Transit CAT in the Savannah area. They operate 16 routes, two shuttle routes, the state's only passenger ferry service. They're the second largest transit service by trip volume uh, in the state, and they offer service seven days a week. So now that you have a little background info, we're going to spend the next few minutes discussing what we've learned from our previous outreach activities, including a series of stakeholder interviews, uh, committee meetings, and public surveys that we did. During all of our outreach activities, we saw a few trends that kept coming up. Um, we made a note of five of these themes here. Um, first, as we heard from a lot of people that there may be a lack of awareness in regard to the availability of services, specifically who's eligible to ride some of the demand response services. Um, we also heard that providing transportation to jobs is extremely important, and specifically that a lot of the jobs in the region may not be located in city centers where traditional transit services operate. That could be a manufacturing facility or an agricultural facility or a you know food packaging facility, something like that. That's that's out not in a traditional city center and getting there can be difficult. Um, much of the conversation like that revolved around the Hyundai plant, uh, the Bryan County mega site, the related facilities there. Um, obviously, that's going to have a massive transportation requirement when it hits full operational capacity with the number of people that will be employed there. Um, we interviewed representatives from regional transit providers and found some operational concerns around federal programs that provide a lot of the funding for agencies. Uh, vehicle replacement has been problematic. A couple of other things that we have noted. And then finally, uh, you know, lots of people in the data have noted that demand for public transit is recovering from the pandemic, uh, approaching pre-pandemic levels in a lot of places. Considering the rate the region is growing, uh, especially growing among the senior population, that there could very well be a need very soon for increased transit capacity. Um, so those are, are five themes we saw. Um, we want to do a little bit of detail here on highlights from our public survey. We conducted that in October and November, uh, collecting input from the general public about transportation needs. Um, we've highlighted a few of our responses here across the next couple of slides. So we noted that uh, even though 83% of respondents primarily use a car to get around, 
uh, over 87% said that public transit is either important or very important for the region. Um, a similar percentage, 84%, think that there's need for improvement there. So uh, that gave us some direction showing support, but but also need to, to find those solutions that can help folks. Uh, along those lines, we asked what amenities could encourage people to use public transit more in the future. Uh, and what we saw here were based around providing more service and better service. So uh, larger service areas, more coverage, more convenience amenities, things like real time bus information, which can come like via screen at a bus stop or an app, uh, easier scheduling for demand response services. Um, there was some interest in expanded service hours in the morning or evening on the weekend, uh, things like that. We also asked for help in guiding the regional transit vision, what the goals for this project should really be. Um, and on the top of the list was providing mobility options for those who are unable to drive or don't have access to a personal vehicle, like a lot of concern for the mobility needs of those populations. Um, other priorities included connections to employment, uh, connections to areas outside the region, um, easing traffic congestion, supporting economic development, things like that. Um, we also asked about potential service improvements, uh, things that the region really needs in the transit world, and we, we gave that as an open-ended response. Um, we got a lot of ideas in there, um, too many to present all in one place, but we did classify those by category to provide here to show you kind of what we were generally seeing. 27% um, the largest uh, category was people that want more convenient or accessible transit. They want it more often, they want it more regularly. 15% um, noted that service to rural areas was lacking. Um, some, you know, whether that was uh, reliability or time related. 14% uh, wanted more fixed route services in the region. Um, some of those were across larger areas. 9% um, say that there's a need for improved service for seniors. And 7% said that systems that exist currently need to be uh, made more reliable in some way. So um, that's kind of the gist of, of our public survey that was really helpful in informing uh, where we go from here, um, which is our project vision and goals. All of these inputs fed into this draft vision and goal statement. Um, that I will now show you. Um, this comes from the results of our existing conditions analysis, our data analysis, the stakeholder interviews, that public survey, really everything we did up until this point fed into a draft vision statement. We then refined that vision statement with the help of our project partners and our project advisory committee. And we ended up with this uh, draft vision statement that says the Coastal Regional Commission will support an accessible, reliable, and responsive transit network for all communities in the region. This will empower individuals, assist area employers, and strengthen the local economies of coastal Georgia. Stemming from that vision, we then established uh, seven goals to assist in evaluating our ideas. Um, we relied heavily on input from our stakeholders here, uh, as well as some previous planning efforts and things we wanted to make sure we were building on existing priorities. So we want to make sure that we are ensuring the safety and health of all transit riders and workers, improving the convenience, reliability, and customer service of transit systems in the region, enhancing operational performance of public transit services in the region, using innovation and technology to optimize public transit ridership performance and public awareness, facilitating equitable transit access throughout the region, ensuring that system capacity meets the changing needs of the region that includes the senior population like we mentioned earlier and then we want to make sure we're promoting regional cooperation and resource sharing to enhance efficiency in transit operation throughout the region between the urban areas and the rural areas and just across the board in general so those are our seven draft goals um and then building on all of that we end up at our transit service options. So we're going to look at some of the options that we are evaluating now uh, with the help of our project advisory committee and our project team. We came up with this list. I'm going to present to some of them who you hear now. So during this portion of the meeting, we're going to show you these ideas. Uh, we're going to use Mentimeter, which is an online feedback tool to solicit your input on these ideas. 
So to participate in this activity, go to menti.com and enter the eight digit code you see here. That's four, seven, one, two, nine, six, one, two. Or scan the QR code uh, that should pull it up automatically for you. Um, and then you should be ready to go. You can uh, access it on your phone. You can use a separate browser window. Um, we'll give everyone a second to pull this up. Uh, and then once you pull that up, you should see a landing page that says you're waiting on the presenter. Um, and if you miss this, don't worry, that code will be at the top of the screen for all the polling slides that we do. So first we're gonna give everybody a chance to just let us know where they're from, sort of a practice poll, warm up poll, make sure folks are logged in. So uh, if you still need that eight digit code, you can find it there on the top of the screen. Um, but now all you need to do is just let us know what county you're from. And we will give people just 30 seconds or so to do that. This lets us uh, just make sure folks are, are got it working. A few folks coming in here and then we left an option in case you don't live in coastal Georgia. Maybe, maybe you work here uh, in the region and you're interested. You can select that option as well. We've got a few folks, a uh, few folks logged in. Here's a few more popping in. We'll give 10 more seconds. Um, and we'll get going. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right, great. Now uh, we'll just start talking about these transit alternatives. Uh, we have divided those into three categories. Those are consistent with GDOT's previous planning efforts. Um, first up, we're going to talk about transit expansion ideas that create new services or expand the scope of existing ones. After that, we'll talk about transit enhancement options, which include amenities that improve the transit experience or convenience for riders. And then finally, after that, we have a couple of administrative tools that may benefit transit in the region. These are back end solutions. They're less exciting than some of the other stuff, uh, but they may provide a benefit at a lower cost. So we want to make sure we're thinking about uh, ideas that can improve efficiencies like that. All right, so first up, uh, transit service expansion. We're going to jump straight into to some ideas here. Um, so first and foremost is expanding existing capacity of the rural system to meet unmet demand, uh, especially among the seniors, uh, senior population in the region. That's something we've we've documented a potential need for. Um, that would probably be seen as a, in a gradual sort of increase in capacity. Um, another thing we saw some interest in is a limited six month trial of Saturday service for some of the systems that currently only operate on weekdays. Um, we like doing trials when we talk about expanding service hours. Trials are good because you already own the buses. You don't have to make huge changes. Um, there's not a huge investment uh, if the pilot program doesn't doesn't take off. But we do think there's probably need for some Saturday service in these areas. Um, another thing that we heard talking to the staff in Statesboro is the desire to extend their existing routes uh, to some other areas in the northeast and northwest, several key destinations up there. So that's an idea that we've captured and looked at. There's a few other local service alternatives um, that have seen various levels of planning throughout the years uh, that we want to make sure we discuss and, and talk about here. The first uh, is initiating transit service in the Brunswick area, which currently does not have urban transit, urban transit service. Um, the current recommendation uh, from the city's planning work is to institute a microtransit zone in the city of Brunswick, shown here in blue, with a uh, supplemental flex route to St. Simons Island. Uh, we know there's a huge need for employment trips between the two areas, so that flex route would, I think, definitely help address that. Um, a microtransit zone could be a good solution for providing on-demand mobility to folks in the city and on the peninsula. Um, so that's a good idea. Another idea we've we've identified is a limited fixed route over a potential microtransit service in St. Mary's area. Um, there's been success, a lot of success in Statesboro with Statesboro Area Transit. So 
it made sense to look at some of the other communities to see if there's a need for similar services. Um, CRC ran a pilot in 2018 in St. Mary's that did not see great ridership. Um, is a very different profile than Statesboro. We know that. So um, this is something that we're, we're kind of looking at as, as an aspirational idea, as a, as a potential idea to get feedback on. Um, so, you know, anyone, anyone from the St. Mary's area, we'd love to hear feedback on that. Um, as, as we gather more input. Um, and then finally, um, we're looking at Liberty Transit. They, their transit development plan from 2018, one of the things they considered was a deviated fixed route system. There's a potential here to potentially do maybe microtransit, uh, supplementary microtransit zones to the current system. Um, the Liberty uh, Fort Stewart area, it's, it's less dense than a lot of areas in the region and a more flexible system could potentially reach more of the transit dependent riders that may have trouble uh, getting the fixed route system to work for them today. So that's something we've considered looking into more. So that brings us to our first real polling exercise. So um, let us know what you think about these five ideas, ranking them one through five. So one is not needed. Uh, and five is that there's a great need for that service. Um, six ideas, I said five, six. Um, I know that some of these are pretty local, so don't feel like you have to chime in. Um, you know, if, if you can abstain, you, you don't have to give an answer, but uh, just you can kind of play with your sliders or your buttons according to how it's displaying on your end and give us your feedback. We'll give people 30 seconds or so here. Okay, we've got a first few answers coming in. Rural expansion, popular, Brunswick, St. Mary's, okay. Like I said, we'll just give a little more time to let people give their ideas, their thoughts. And again, these, this, this, this uh, plays into our evaluation framework. Um, public input is an important part of how these projects uh, get selected or prioritized or, or not selected. Um, so we do appreciate everyone's feedback here. And then again, uh, with the public survey that, that you'll be able to take as well. Um, I will give just a few more seconds. I think I can see a few more people are working on it. Um, and we will proceed here in just a second. And I do believe you can actually go backwards on your Mentimeter too if you realize you missed something. Um, I believe that is a capability. All right, uh, we'll talk here about a few um, employment related opportunities, um, regional connection opportunities. Um, as we sort of mentioned, the employment base for the region is growing and it's also spreading out. Um, and one program that we think could potentially really help fill gaps in getting people to work is a van pool program. Um, I like van pool. It's a very flexible program. Uh, it's user driven. Employers and employees organize their own pools. So it can really help get people to where they're most needed. There's been a lot of success with van pool in the greater Atlanta region. Um, CRC previously ran a van pool pie in 2010. Uh, we know that things are, are very different now. Um, 2010 was in the middle of the Great Recession, and the economy in coastal Georgia now has grown just tremendously. Um, so we think that it might be time to reach back to that pilot for lessons learned, but also look into a way that we could use that to, to meet some of these commuting needs. Um, on the rest of this slide, we have a number of ideas that involve routes that travel longer distances throughout the region. Um, we're calling these shuttle services. Um, but you can imagine some of them also more as like commuter bus. These are, are serving all, some heavy employment needs. Um, some of these have existed in the past. Some are new. Um, so we definitely see need here for, for looking into these ideas, coordinating further, because some of them are going to involve multiple cities, multiple counties, 
uh, and multiple providers potentially. Um, the first one we is we see a whole lot of trips between Brunswick and Savannah, and there's not a lot of good options uh, back and forth between the two. Um, there could also be intermediate stops on a route like that. Um, we also know this, as we've noted earlier, the tremendous need for transportation to the Bryan County mega site. Uh, this has been identified in several previous plans. Um, a big challenge you see in providing transit to sites like this can be scheduling. Um, a lot of times the largest transportation need at these factory sites will be centered around the third shift late night when um, operating a transit service can actually be really difficult. You know, it's hard to get people to to drive and stuff like that. So there's there is challenges. But, you know, CAT, their master transportation plan identified this need. Um, they presented the idea for a shuttle uh, that connects the two, but also one that connects Statesboro and Savannah. That includes intermediate stops at major destinations like the airport and cooler and the port. Um, there's definitely, I think, an opportunity there for coordination and, and a potential service that could could really help unite that section of the region and provide some really needed mobility. Um, similar, we've included an idea for reinitiating the shuttle between Savannah and Tybee Island. Uh, maybe adding a connection there to the airport. Um, there's support for this in, in multiple plans from Tybee and, and, and Savannah region. Um, work going on right now actively to reinstate this idea. So we'd love to get your opinion um, if, if you think a Savannah to Tybee shuttle could be useful. And then we will move on to our second polling question. So again, just let us know you, how you feel about these employment and shuttle ideas uh, again give 30 seconds to a minute for people to to get their answers in and then we will move along Okay, first answers are popping up. Not surprised to see the mega site shuttle bus uh, with a lot of support. I mean, that's there's just so many thousands of people there. Regional fan pool seeing seeing a good amount of support as well. Tybee Island coming in in third. I'd say in third, but you know, it doesn't, it's not a horse race. It, it, we're not picking one idea. You know, we're, we're prioritizing them according to a number of factors. So it's very easy to view this as a video game. All right, lots of responses coming in. I'm going to give another 20, 15 seconds, maybe. See if we catch a few more. But again, just really appreciate everyone's time and feedback today. So we're going to move on and we're going to talk about some transit enhancement options. Ideas on how to enhance transit service in the region. Um, so we have three ideas here. The first is discount programs for targeted audiences such as seniors, students, uh, et cetera. These programs can encourage ridership uh, and they can help reduce a fare burden for disadvantaged passengers. Uh, fares are usually a fairly small piece of the budget for most transit operators, but also transit budgets are very tight. So you want to do careful consideration before you take away any potential revenue stream. However, that can sometimes pay for themselves. Uh, Athens has had a lot of success with their fare free program for youth that has translated into a lot of paying riders as those kids get older. So. Uh, there's a lot of possibility there to look into. Uh, a similar suggestion here uh, would be for CRC's rural system to set up a recurring reservation and discounting system. Uh, it could reduce the scheduling burden for both sides. Really, CRC already does this with uh, standing orders for dialysis patients. So th this idea is really just effectively a, an extension of that program for other, other needs and purposes. Um, and then another need we identified um, is the need for reducing the reliance on cash fares among various systems. So uh, obviously fewer and fewer people carry cash these days. Um, lots of transit systems have largely largely relied on either cash or stored value cards like the cat card and Chatham. Um, 
But now there's an increasingly large number of options to collect payments digitally, uh, directly from a bank card, things like that. Uh, we want to look at what options would work best to allow for more flexibility in payments. So we know cash is a great option for a lot of people. We're not saying uh, to move away from that to a cash free system. We're just talking about a way to accept uh, additional payment time. Uh, another recommendation we're looking to advance is continued investment in replacement vehicles for the region's providers. So uh, as these transit vehicles accumulate miles, they wear out and they need replacement. Uh, supply chain issues during the pandemic created a backlog in a lot of areas. Uh, and we want to make sure we're planning uh, ahead now to mitigate any future procurement issues. So um, that's as simple as, as coming up with a vehicle replacement plan and uh, or updating the current one and making sure that we're on track uh, to maintain state of good repair in the fleets uh, in the region. Um, additionally, something that we heard from almost everyone that we talked to uh, was the need for improved amenities along the fixed route, specifically bus shelters. Um, this has been identified in multiple Chatham County plans as well as uh, in the Statesboro area. So we are looking at coordinating, um, planning an, an installation of bus shelters, especially at key transfer points uh, throughout the region. So that's five ideas here that we can solicit your opinion on. So um, just a couple more of these polls here, and then we'll have exactly what we need to move forward with the plan. So give us just 30 seconds again and, and let us know what you think. We've got the first few options or few answers popping up. Um, digital payments, state of good repair, both with fives. Um, spring reservations also popular. Okay, we're getting a few more. Again, I'll give 15, 20 more seconds, let people finalize their selections, and then we'll move on to administrative tools, which is our last category. Uh, and then we'll just have a few wrap up activities. Okay. Like I said, uh, we will move along now to the administrative tools and guidance ideas. Um, we have three of them here that may be effective at boosting transit in the region. Um, first thing is to hire a regional mobility manager to assist with transit planning activities and coordination across the region. Um, the Georgia DOT has a mobility manager program in several active in several regions um this individual will be charged with carrying out the recommendations made in this plan and others uh doing coordination among all regional providers to help improve mobility options for everybody um, another idea is to initiate a six-month educational and marketing campaign about transit options in the region that reaches back to that awareness point that came up in a lot of our public involvement um, there's lots of resources available to assist with this process and a concerted effort to educate the public could help boost ridership and ensure that uh, the transit dependent residents of the region get the most out of the region's services. And finally, um, an idea that came up was partnering with area technical colleges uh, and other schools about establishing early career programs, uh, apprenticeships, mentoring programs that could help train the future generation of transit professionals uh, and the skills needed to really contribute to the region's mobility future. Um, there is always a need for trained mechanics and managers, planners, dispatchers, all sorts of jobs in the transit world uh, that are always in demand and providing some of that training and providing that guidance and mentorship locally could uh, really benefit the region's transit systems and make sure that they stay fully staffed 
um, into the future. So uh, that's our three ideas we're presenting tonight. Uh, and this is our last poll. So um, let us know what you think here. Again, give everybody 30 seconds to a minute to, to complete these and, and we'll go from there. A few ideas or a few responses popping up at this point, and then we will kind of start wrapping up our evening. Um, again, really appreciate everyone's time tonight. I know it's dinner time and we're all ready to go eat, so thanks for joining us. All right, and finally, uh, we will just give you an opportunity here to leave some additional thoughts, um, any details we might have missed. Um, any any other ideas? Alternatively, there is a Q and A button on your Teams app. If you have any questions you'd like us to address in our Q and A um, session that we're going to have, we're going to give a few moments for Q and A here after uh, this slide. And we're not going to present these on the screen, so you know you can be open and free uh, with your responses and your ideas. That's just for us to take and make sure we're not missing stuff and, and are considering everyone's input. Okay, and we're going to move on here in just a moment. All right, and that brings us again to the end of our presentation. Um, thank you to everyone for your time. We we will leave time here for Q&A. Um, I will be sticking around uh, and can answer any questions you want to put in that chat um, and, and let us know. Um, I will move on to our next slide, but please, if you have questions, please, please, please submit them. Um, but we do want to note that the public survey should go live tonight. Uh, it should be live now. Um, we're going to keep that open through July 19th uh, to get everyone's input for our second round. That will be our final uh, public involvement activity, and that will be the final input for our evaluation process. After that, we will be finalizing the plan and, and putting that up uh, for everyone's review once that's had a chance to 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 get finalized and reviewed. Um, the project website link is here. You probably went to the project website already tonight to access this meeting, but the URL is there for the future. Um, we'll be putting out more uh, information about the survey here over the next uh, few days just to help point people to it and get responses. And again, please pass these links along to anyone you know who may be interested. And that is it for tonight for us. Thanks again to everyone for your time and your input. Um, again, I'll stick around. We'll be here for a while um, and can answer any questions that you want to put into the Q&A chat. But otherwise, I just want to thank everyone for their time and for their input and uh, for helping us out here uh, finish up this great project. So thanks, everyone.